What's going on guys? This is Cam from SolveX Media and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the 13 steps we utilize to build landing pages that convert like crazy. Now this is based off a scientific approach, so there's no guessing, there's no hoping, there's no pleading, and this is utilized across 120 landing pages we've built and we've seen conversion rates increase by 286%. This has taken many of our clients from six to seven figures, from seven to eight figures, and from eight figures to nine figures, and that is why this is the $100 million landing page tutorial. Now full disclosure, Disclaimer, nothing I teach here today will be the magic trick to fixing a poor offer, an awful product, weak ad creatives, and a confusing website. Now, before we get into it, you need to understand there's different levers you can pull in your business, small levers, big levers, and each provide different amounts of ROI, and most importantly, incremental revenue you add to your business. Small levers, less revenue, big levers, more revenue. You don't wanna pull the small levers because it takes more time and the return on investment is not the same as pulling those big levers that can astronomically increase your revenue. Now, some small levers are on-site conversion rate optimization, better customer service operations, upgrading content and photography, big levers. This is what I love, leveraging new channels. Let's say you're doing paid advertising, uh, online advertising now you can go offline utilize TV radio and so on then you can focus on your merchandising this is your offers your positioning your pricing and my favorite utilizing landing pages what most people are doing today is pushing people to the home page or product page and this brings me to my next slide which is what is a landing page a landing page is a standalone page that you only utilize to push specific traffic to so let's say you have a paid advertising campaign you're only going to push people to this landing page now that's this standalone page has one offer one position to one market with one message. So it's not confusing in regards to a website which is more educational, more informative. A landing page is a conversion focused asset that evokes urgency and scarcity to get people to act then and there. Now when to start testing landing pages, right? You've nailed your offer and you have a system in place for cranking out new creatives, but you're only pushing traffic to your website. Right now it's time to get people to these landing pages so you can see increases in your conversion rate, which in turn will improve your return on advertising. Scenario B, you wanna test new products, angles, positioning, pricing, offer. It's very hard to do this when a website is sort of all top of the funnel, everyone sees the same message. It, you, you can't really get creative, you can't test a particular thing, whereas a landing page, again, has that singular focus. Scenario C, you can afford a full website revamp and you want a cheaper and faster option. I like to be agile and many of our clients today, they take the landing page we have, they duplicate it and they're testing different offers, different products with that same landing page template and they're absolutely killing it because on average, landing pages convert 8x more than regular product pages or home pages. And this brings me to the customer journey. The more steps one needs to take to get to that next phase, which is buying, the lower your conversion rates. So with the SolveX Media landing pages, what happens? You push people to a landing page, they go to the checkout, and bam, order confirmation. What most people are doing is they're pushing people to the homepage, right? And when you push people to the homepage, then they need to find the collection that best aligns with what they're looking for. They have to find the, the product within that collection, then they have to go to the cart, and then they go to the checkout, and maybe, they finally confirm the order. As you guys can see, with the landing page, there's only three steps to getting to the completion point and the regular setup has over six. So reduce the number of steps one needs to take to buy, the likelier they are to buy. So now we're gonna be looking at the 13 steps we utilize at SolveX Media to build landing pages that convert like crazy. And again, guys, our pages convert 286% higher than industry averages, and this is because of the scientific approach we use here. Now, step one, select your landing page template. You got a listicle, advertorial, and a shoppable as options. A listicle is basically a list of reasons why people should buy from you. This is a great opportunity to pre-sell your audience on exactly the problem you're solving. So when you look at the example on screen, 10 reasons why Canadians are obsessed with this new copy. Lots of real estate you have on this page to literally run through the ins and outs of exactly what your product is and how it's completely different than everything else on the market. And on the very bottom, have a killer offer. An advertorial, this is basically a sales page in the format of a newsletter. So it's very, very interesting how you can see in this example, if your dog fights seasonal allergies, itching and yeast issues, try this new probiotic chew. And they literally spend 90% of this page giving people a reason why they should take that next step. And that next step is centered around their probiotic chew. It's a great way to pre-frame, pre-educate and get people to the sales page and then convert them like crazy. And this brings me to the next page, which is the shoppable. And this is basically great for direct response marketers that are looking to write crazy sales copy and really indicate why people should take action then and there. And it's always centered around one product. So it's a long form sales page. 
Step two, clearly state your value proposition in the header. Eight out of 10 people read your headline, two out of 10 people read the rest of your body copy. The reason why bounce rates are super, super high in today's day and age is the headline does not resonate with the end user. And how you can get your headline to resonate with the end user is to have a value proposition that is completely different from everything everyone else is currently saying, and most importantly, specific to that end user. So your headline needs to be bold, it needs to be short and to the point, and you need to make a statement. We usually recommend seven to eight words max because again, people's attention span today is less than a goldfish. It's less than a goldfish. So if they have to burn calories trying to understand what is going on, they're gonna bounce. And this is why on average today, sites have a bounce rate of 80 to 90%. Step three, the red carpet experience. If you have to make Kim Kardashian leave your site to learn something, you've already lost half the battle. You need to be super clear and you need to understand there's a set of objections in the end user's mind that you need to address through your messaging. And if you don't, they're gonna bounce. So what are you selling? How will this product help me or make my life better from the end user's point of view? How fast can I get this product? Why should I trust you? And how does this compare to all the other options in the marketplace? You need to do the homework on your end user. You need to understand the problems they're facing and the solutions they've been proposed and then you need to find a way to position your product as the solution between where they're currently at and where they want to get to step four remove excess clutter this is my favorite remove any navigational links you have you don't want to push people to the about us page the contact page your social media links none of that is relevant when people come to a landing page you got one offer around one product and you want them to act then and there so forget about having multiple products because again that's pushing people to, towards different directions you want to basically say this is the product this is the option you guys have and this is the offer around this product bam done forget about multiple angles when we think about this from a paid advertising point of view you should be testing angles on your advertising right around that product when you push people to this landing page there's this concept called message mapping which is literally keeping that user journey consistent you don't want to push people and say hey moms who are looking to take better care of their babies to a page that's centered around dads right moms keep it super super focused and forget about any external links, any buttons that are pushing people outside of this landing page, outside of getting them to purchase the product is not necessary. Step five, crafting an exceptional customer journey. Now, these are some of the essential elements you need on your landing page, a hero section, a why section, a brag bar, customer reviews, comparison chart, shop section, frequently asked questions, the problem, and step six, understanding psychological pricing tactics and how you can utilize this on your page to convert a lot more people. So here I have a few examples that actually show the science behind the pricing tactic. If you were to sell a product for a dollar and you reduced it to 99 cents, the conversion rate would go from 1.88% to 3.06%. If you had a product that was priced at, let's say $5 and you reduced it from five to 4.99, a cent off, your conversion rate would go from 3.84% to 4.67%. Each audience re reacts differently. So learn what works for your business. This is why I always say test, test, test. Step seven, use data to drive conversions. No guessing, no hoping, no pleading. Now there's two types of data sets we look at, quantitative and then qualitative. Most people today, they spend all their time worrying about quantitative data. And although these are great indicators in terms of where your business stands in comparison to baselines and benchmarks you've laid out, uh, it, it really does not do you any justice unless you're also looking at the qualitative data because in many instances, it's the qualitative data that tells you why your quantitative data is where it's at. So for us, utilizing heat maps, scroll maps, and user session recordings is a great way to optimize some of those quantitative metrics you see like CPM, CPAs, uh, CVRs, AOV, LTV, email revenue, subscriber open rates. Step eight, choose the variable you plan to test. Far too often when I'm talking to some of our clients, they're like, hey, we're testing this, we're testing that. And it's just all over the place. And they're in most instances testing what we call secondary variables. For us, we focus on primary variables, your product, single verse bundle, offer, percentage based, uh, dollar based, free gift, BOGO, pricing, increasing it, decreasing it, positioning, who are we selling to? Is it moms? Is it dads? Is it teenagers? And really getting into their psychographic characteristics. If your goal is a higher AOV, you can bundle together some of your best selling products, or you can adjust your offer so you get people to buy more of that offer. Uh, your goal is a higher conversion rate, adjust your discount or your pricing, adjust your positioning, get one to one in terms of your messaging, and you'll see a higher conversion rate. Step nine, understand your numbers and your targets. How many times have I spoken to a client and they're like, Cam, I tested this landing page, but it didn't work. The question is, what metric are you trying to improve above your baseline? Are you trying to improve your AOV or your CVR? So what happens to your profits if your AOV increases, but your CVR decreases? 
or if your CVR increases, but your AOV decreases. These two numbers are inversely related. So it's very important to understand that. You can see in scenario A, B, and C, the numbers vary. When your AOV decreases and your CVR increases, your contribution margin, which is your profitability per customer, changes as well. So it's very, very important to understand that metric you're opt optimizing for, whether it's your AOV or your conversion rate, and really tackling the problem from that point on. Step 10, having a frequently asked questions on the bottom of your landing page. This is very, very important because we've seen in numerous instances on heat maps, this section gets a lot of attention. So here you can basically ask yourself, what are some of the objections and concerns that I've failed to answer on that landing page that I can answer here? Because if people have uncertainties, they have doubts, they're not going to buy. So this section is your opportunity to mitigate any of that and get straight to the point, as opposed to getting people to look at some of your other pages, like your refund policy, uh, your shipping page, reaching out to customer support. That is all friction. Within your frequently asked questions section, answer all of those questions one may potentially have prior to buying your product. Step 11, iterate your pages and never get comfortable. Far too often, I see someone see a conversion rate of say 5% on their landing page. They're like, hey, I made it. I'm like, why is it not 10%? Why is it not 15%? So there are smaller swings you can test and larger swings. Smaller swings include headlines, copy, creatives, formatting. Larger swings, products, offer, pricing, positioning. So larger swings is ultimately gonna get your AOV to increase, your CBR to increase uh, radically more than smaller swings. So if there's a hierarchy in how you test and how you iterate your pages, focus on the large swings first First, and then the smaller swings. Step 12, my favorite, guarantees. Money back guarantee, satisfaction, lifetime guarantee, happiness guarantee, buyback, lowest price. One that is not mentioned here is a product specific guarantee. So let's say you are selling uh, a product that covers your barbecue. Surface clean, 30 day guarantee. So it's specific to the problem you're solving. That is what a lot of business owners aren't doing today. But if you can make a product specific guarantee around the claim you're making in regards to the product, it's game over. People will pull out their credit card in a heartbeat because they're like, look, if I don't solve X problem, I have X guarantee that's centered around it. That is what people want to see. That is what they want to hear. A lot of these guarantees you see, they're very generic. We've all seen them. We've all heard them. So we're sort of oblivious to it. I wouldn't go this route. I would definitely go down the route of a product specific guarantee. Step 13, bonus tip, optimize your page speed time. Very, very important. 50% of users today expect uh, page load times to be less than two seconds, two seconds. This will radically decrease your, your bounce rates. Uh, there was a study that said if your site's load time is less than two seconds, your bounce rate is only around 9%. Industry averages when it comes to bounce rates are around 70 to 90%. So just take that into consideration. And guys, the bounce rate is the percentage of people who leave your website within five seconds. So you don't even get a chance to pitch to them. This is your moneymaker. Just make your site speed faster. This is the only takeaway you can take from this video. Now here's what we've done for clients to radically increase site speed. One, reduce image sizes. Two, enable lazy loading. Three, smart delay, optimize code, scripts, and images. Four apps, scripts, health check. I mean, guys, there's so many apps and codes that's like overlapping that you're probably not even utilizing. Five, use UGTM for all your scripts. Six, use a fast Shopify theme, even though everything we do is fully custom. Seven, use system fonts. Eight, minimize redirects and broken links. Nine, set up and optimize CDN. 10, server optimization and up upgrading. And 11, intelligent cache utilization. You will see a radical increase in your conversion rate and that's because people can actually consume your offer uh, there's studies that also show with every one second improvement in your site speed you see an improvement of six to seven percent in your conversion rate so if you're doing a hundred thousand dollars in revenue right now you can add six to seven thousand in revenue if you're doing a million in revenue you can add sixty to seventy thousand dollars in revenue by simply improving your site speed by a second Prove it by two seconds you see hundred twenty thousand dollars in additional revenue not bad right so what makes a good landing page to conclude sam from the hustle says every sentence should excite someone to read the next sentence it should get you excited a good landing page is like an opening act at a at a concert every section should be thoughtfully laid out to inspire the next action if i was to break it down into four things your landing page needs to be aesthetically easy and organized with design hierarchy easy to use ux responsive and fast well balanced between educating and selling and there is room for both to exist and focus on angles not just penetrating one level deep 
That is it for me, guys. This is Cam from SolveX Media. Thank you for listening in on the 13 steps you can utilize in your business to build landing pages that convert like crazy. If you're a business owner who's looking to implement a landing page and wants my help, wants the SolveX Media support system behind you,